Welcome back to Cuisines and Cocktails. On this episode, we're gonna play around with some lobster and we're gonna make a cucumber cocktail. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have some, this is a ginger cucumber simple syrup with herbs. We're gonna put uh, two ounces. And we're gonna put two ounces of vodka. And we are also going to wet the rim of the uh, glass. And to do that, what you can do is just get a little bit of water in a plate. And then whatever you wanna rim your glass with. And today it's a chili lime uh, seasoning. And just roll it around, get a nice even coat. And for a garnish, we're gonna take a couple slices of English cucumber and a slice of ginger. And strain our cocktail into the glass. And it's a light refreshing with a little bit of kick cocktail. When we come back, we're gonna learn how to break down lobster and make a saffron salad. Well, we're gonna start on the lobsters. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to somewhat break them down and cook them so they're more evenly cooked in the parts. And what I mean by that is the claws and the tails cook differently. It's kind of like a chicken. The, the dark meat cooks takes longer to cook than the white meat, typically. So the, the butcher, when we bought these, already split the head, so they're already a dead lobster. So you can just twist the legs off. And the claws take about eh, five or six minutes. And we'll give those a minute or two head start and then we'll throw in the tails and the heads. And while that's going on, let me kind of explain what's gonna happen. So we're gonna use all the claw meat and the our meat to use in the uh, a dill aioli salad. Kind of like a lobster roll, so to speak, but with a twist. And then we're gonna make um, lobster wellingtons with the two tails. And so think of it kind of like a appetizer and an entree of lobster. So when we come back, I'll have the, uh, the tails and the heads in the broth, and then we can break down the, get the meat out of the claws and meet all the tail. It's been a couple minutes, so, and for this dish, we actually wanna leave the tails just a little on the underside because we're going to finish them in the oven with the puff pastry, so we don't wanna overcook them with our final process. And you can actually use the poached liquid if you want to make a lobster bisque or a lobster stew. You can just use this as your basis if you don't want to make all this into a salad or you could definitely make it into a soup. But today we're gonna play with just the lobster meat. Then we're gonna bring a saute pan over. It's been preheating. We're gonna let these cool down so we can take the meat out of the shells. And we're gonna start on the preparation for the lobster salad and the lobster wellington. So for the salad, we're gonna do some fennel, some celery, red onion, 
and cherry tomatoes. You want to keep all the onions and the fennel and the celery that we're going to cut up. Um, so on the smaller side, you don't want to overpower the lobster. So keep it on the small side, a nice fine brunoise or a small dice. A couple stalks of celery. And again, keep it all the same size. And we have some cherry tomatoes. We're going to quarter these. And we'll use a few more as garnish on top of the salad, the lobster salad. And we're gonna crush garlic, take the end off, and the fennel. And again, fennel is to me an, an underused uh, vegetable. I think it has a wonderful flavor, it gives a little bit of brightness to any dish. It has also a little bit of a licorice anise flavor. And then we're going to cut around the circumference of the fennel. If you don't cut all the way through on the top side, you can it can hold its shape for you. It makes cross cutting a little bit easier. And in our hot pan, we're actually going to put a little bit of olive oil and we're going to cook the, the vegetables just slightly. Since it's going into a, with cooked lobster meat, you should really cook your vegetables just so they're not super hard and crunchy with a nice tender lobster meat. Kind of want it to all be not the same consistency. We're not going to try to get a lot of color, just sweating them out a little bit. And we're gonna give them a, just a minute or two in, under heat. Then we're gonna add a little bit of the tomatoes and we'll be able to then make the aioli. So we'll let this cook for a minute and when we come back, I'll show you how to make a dill aioli. So we just put a little bit of saute on the uh, fennel and the celery and onions. Just put a little bit of heat on the tomatoes just to take some of that rawness out of it. And we'll hold that so we have the rest of the, the, the crab claw meat and leg meat um, picked and ready to fold in. We'll have a pan heating, we're gonna add some butter and we're going to caramelize onions and garlic for the lobster wellington. I'm just gonna move the butter around, let it get all melted. And once the butter's melted, we can add the onions. And again, as I always say, if you like garlic, keep adding. If you don't like it, add less. You can easily adjust this recipe. And, and if you want to make it a very herby and this is springtime, you can add you know, some fresh dill, basil, whatever you like of your favorite herb. I'm gonna to try to always demonstrate kind of a base level ingredient list, kind of a menu recipe. And we can always tweak from there. Well, the onions are caramelized and we can let these go and really get uh, some good color and really reduce. Um, so it'll take four or five minutes easily. We're gonna make the aioli for the lobster salad. So I got four egg yolks. And we're going to whisk them till they start to get a ribbon stage. You can do this if you have a uh, food processor, RoboCoop. Um, you can use that and blend it that way. And as you can see, you can kind of, when you move the whisk around, it holds the a little bit of the shape. That's what you're looking for. So you can get a little bit thicker. Same time, we're gonna keep an eye on our onions. We might add a little bit of just olive oil to that. 
just to keep it on the moist side so it doesn't burn, but we get a nice caramelization. At the same time, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. And we're gonna add a little bit of cracked pepper. So I just added a little bit of olive oil just to keep the bottom of the pan moist. And the last thing before we start adding vinegar and oil to this to make the aioli, we have to add what makes it an aioli, which is garlic. So it's, it's a little pet peeve of mine when restaurants or menus say garlic aioli, you're, they're basically saying garlic, garlic, mayonnaise, which really makes no sense. Let's crush it. We're gonna mince it really well dissolves into the aioli. Run a knife through a couple times. And then to really get a, a hard mince on it, if you lay your knife down flat and you put the palm of your, of your hand and cover the tip, you can twist and pull back on little sections of the garlic. And don't worry, you're not gonna cut yourself and you're basically putting a lot of pressure on the front edge or the sharp part of the knife and you're pulling backwards and you're basically rubbing the garlic into your cutting board. So a great way to get basically garlic flavor and have it almost have no appearance of having garlic in your sauce or in your whatever you're using the garlic with. We're gonna use a little bit of tarragon vinegar. And we're just gonna add enough to give it a little bit of acidity and balance. And then we're gonna slowly drizzle in olive oil. And you wanna have it a, a real slow trickle so you can emulsify the oil into the egg yolk as you're whisking. All right, and there's our aioli, and we're gonna take a little bit of fresh dill, pull off the fronds, and just run a knife through the herb, just to kind of get a little bit smaller so everybody, every piece can get some of the fresh dill. And just give it one quick whisk around to disperse. And there we have our garlic dill aioli. Our onions are looking pretty good. We'll just give the onions two, maybe three more minutes. Get a nice, really hard caramelization on them. When we come back, I'll show you how to break apart lobster meat. And then we'll build our uh, wellingtons and make the salad. Stay tuned. To take apart a lobster claw, if you open up the claw and you twist it sideways, the cartilage will come out with the thumb. And then when you break the claw in half, beat it one side and the other side, the back of your knife, the whole claw comes out as one piece. So I'll show that again. So most people will just break it out, but then usually the meat will stay in the claw, the thumb or whatever you call this. But if you twist it up and down to the side to side instead of this way, and you wiggle it out, the cartilage stays with this and the meat stays with the rest of the claw. And just take the back of your knife, couple of cracks, one crack, comes out as a whole piece. We're gonna have just a little bit of meat in the claws, the arms we can dig out. And then to this, we're gonna add about equal part of our vegetable mixture with the lobster. And then we're gonna add a little bit of our aioli. Stir it around and let that marinate. So I'm gonna wash my hands 
clean up and then I'll show you how to break down the lobster tails. Welcome back. So we have, I took one lobster tail apart and I'll show you how to do this. All you do is squeeze, pull apart, and the lobster tail comes right out and you just wanna wiggle the tails so you get that full little piece. Throw that in with our broth, and keep making lobster stock. So to assemble, cut a sheet of puff pastry in half, Take some prosciutto. And we'll probably need two slices per. One, two. We have our caramelized onions and garlic from earlier. We're gonna spread this out. We're gonna wrap this up. And we're just gonna pinch off the sides. Trim off the extra puff pastry. Then put the two lobsters on a baking sheet, whisk our eggs for an egg wash, then we're just going to brush the uh, puff pastry to give it a nice golden brown color when we bake it. And it's going to go into a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes so it gets nice and golden brown. And we're going to season the top with a little bit of salt and black pepper. Stick around, when we come back, we'll have the Wellingtons coming out of the oven and we'll assemble the appetizer salad and have the entree ready to go. Stay tuned. So I just took the Wellingtons out of the oven. It was about 12, 13 minutes and now we're gonna plate. So we're gonna start with the salad and we're gonna let the Wellingtons rest a little bit. So we have a couple leaves of bib lettuce. We're going to put on one side, a couple slices of fresh sourdough bread. We're going to shingle on the other side of a bowl. We're just going to put a little bit more salt and pepper in our lobster salad. And we're going to put that right in the middle in between the two. And we're just gonna give a couple of slices of fresh tomato. And if your knife isn't sharp, you may wanna hone it. So honing puts the edge back on a knife. You should really hone a knife every time you use it. Because a sharp knife is a safe knife. Maybe just a little sprig of dill right on top. Just give that a little extra. Uh, so there's our appetizer. And for the entree, I'm gonna take one of these. We're gonna cut it on the bias. Serve back to back. And then for this, this is a channel knife. A lot of times this portion is on a the end of a uh, zester. And what you do is you start on one side of a lemon or a lime, and you can make really long single strands of zest. We're just gonna go around the lemon a couple times. Put it over the top, roll, cut, and dozzle right over the top. It's just a simple, give it a little citrus, and there we go. Two lobsters done two different ways. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching Cuisines and Cocktails. I'm your host, Chef James Jens of Dinners with Class, inviting you to enjoy your lobster dinner of 
lobster salad with dill aioli and a lobster wellington. Till next time, happy eating.